Football is a sport that can produce the utmost beautiful moments. I assume those of you watching have already felt joy or even sadness due to its amazing sport. However, today we're going to discuss some terrible and mysterious moments that happen in our favorite sport. This video will contain some sensible topics, so please be respectful in the comments. Proceed at your own caution. This could be just another own goal. Legends of the game have scored them and nothing happened. Sadly, it wasn't the case for Escobar. On June 22, 1994, Andres Escobar, the captain of Colombia, scored an own goal in his team's match against the United States at the World Cup. Colombia lost the game 2-1 and was eliminated during the group stage of the tournament. Ten days later, in the early morning of July 2, 1994, Andres Escobar was confronted by a group of men who taunted him for the own goal. He tried to reason with them, but one of the men drew a pistol, shot Escobar six times and killed him. The next night, police arrested a person whom they believed to be the gunman. Humberto Castro Munoz was a bodyguard and driver for a pair of powerful criminals and drug traffickers. The Gallon brothers had reportedly lost large sums of money betting on Colombia's matches at the World Cup. Munoz was sentenced to 43 years in prison, but wound up serving just 11 years before being released for good behavior. On June 24, 1990, Argentina met Brazil in the first knockout round of the World Cup, where Brazilian defender Branco helped keep Diego Maradona in check. But during a pause in play, Branco drunk from a water bottle landed to him by a member of the Argentinian staff. He later complained that he began feeling drowsy and unable to keep up with Maradona, who completed a brilliant run with a pass to set up Claudio Canigia for the winning goal. The Brazilian Federation was unable to prove that the water bottle was actually spiked, but that episode just added more fire to the already intense rivalry between the two countries. Before I explain this one, I just want to mention that this is a famous theory, not a fact, so I'm not taking any merit away from the French. However, the story goes that the Brazil squad was offered 15 million pounds as well as the right to host a future World Cup in exchange for drawing a match against France. Part of the agreement is also said to have included the guarantee of a favorable draw in 2002. Ronaldo, uncomfortable with the agreement, pulled out of the squad but changed his mind after Nike told him he was risking his sponsorship money. Four years later, Brazil is through a group that included China, Costa Rica and Turkey and five years after that, they were awarded the 2014 World Cup. The 1985 European Cup final featured Liverpool and Juventus and it was a highly anticipated match. Tickets were allocated to the two sets of fans and they were to be separated by a neutral section. There was a history of violence between English and Italian clubs and the previous year's final in Rome had ended in acrimony when Liverpool defeated a local side Roma on penalties. Roma fans, the police and even the locals had all turned on Liverpool fans who were forced to seek refugee in a British embassy. Liverpool supporters considered Eisel an opportunity for revenge. The neutral section quickly filled with mainly Italian fans and all that separating them from the Liverpool section was a flimsy fence. Taunts started and then missiles began to fly. The fence was quickly breached and the Liverpool fans advanced. Panic erupted as Juventus supporters and others in the neutral section tried to retreat only to find their way blocked by a concrete wall. The pressure proved too much and the structure gave away, crushing the trapped Italian fans and others. 600 people were injured and 39 lost their lives due to this incident. This one is a weird one, and 25 years later, it still remains a mystery. Supposedly, two teams were playing a match in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the result was 1-1, and out of nowhere, a lightning struck the field, with all the 11 players from the away team losing their lives in the process. There are many theories about this fact, including the use of witchcraft, or that the players were using iron studs. But at the same time, there is a lot of conflicting information about this episode, so I can't give you a full explanation. On February 1, 2012, a massive riot occurred at Port Said Stadium in Egypt, following an Egyptian Premier League football match between Al Masri and Al Ali. 74 people lost their lives and more than 500 were injured after thousands of Al Masri fans invaded the stadium stands and the pitch after the match ended. They violently attacked Ali fans using clubs, stones, machetes, knives, bottles, and fireworks. Many of the deaths were due to police refusal to open the stadium gates, trapping the Ali fans inside, leaving some to die and killing others in a stampede while trying to escape. Civil unrest and severe clashes lasted all the way until 11 February. 
Although this conflict was caused by much deeper factors, their very close meetups in the football field were the last straw. It was 2-2 after 90 minutes at the Azteca Stadium in Mexico City. This was the third game between Honduras and El Salvador in three weeks and the qualification for the 1970 World Cup in Mexico was at stake. Honduras won the first leg 1-0 in their capital Tegucigalpa only for El Salvador to triumph 3-0 at home in San Salvador. After both of these matches, there were many reports of violence between the people of both countries. As the deciding match entered the 11th minute of extra time, El Salvador's Mauricio Pipo Rodriguez sprinted into the penalty area to meet a cross and slid the ball past Honduran goalkeeper Jaime Varela. El Salvador was in the World Cup for the first time in their history, but three weeks later, the countries were at war with each other. In 1942, during the height of World War II, the German army steamrolled across Europe. As the German forces swept through Eastern Europe on their conquest, they eventually came to Ukraine. In its capital, Kiev, there was a factory team mainly composed of retired players from Dynamo and Lokomotiv Kiev. That team, called Start, faced several teams who represented the <laughs> regime. They've beaten them all while being threatened of execution in case they won. They defied the German generals until they had one last match against another team called Hook. Kiev went into this match knowing it would be their last. Win or lose. National pride was at stake, and they knew they could inspire the Ukrainian people to face this occupation with their heads held high. Dinam Kiev played the match of their lives and won 8 0. Sadly, after that match, they all suffered different fates, but ultimately, none of them survived. In a better note, a statue dedicated to the Kiev team of 1942 still stands in the capital today. Matthias Sindelar, also known as the Paper Man, was a remarkable player who scored 26 goals in 43 caps for Austria and 240 goals in 312 matches for austria Vienna. He was the captain and face of the national team which dazzled both their own and fans from other countries during the 1930s. When Austria was annexed by Germany, their national team came to an end. All the players of that team, except Sindelar, went on to form part of the German team. Sindelar alleged that he was nearing the end of his career and that was the reason he wasn't going to join them. So before the 1938 World Cup, a friendly match was arranged between the Mannschaft and a team of Austrian footballers. According to news reports at the time, the Austrians not only played better and won 2-0, but also gave the impression that they were holding back, almost certainly following orders. Sindelar was one of the scorers that day, and when he did score, he danced in front of the box where the German officials were seated. The stunt didn't go down well, and it was the last match he ever played. Just a few months later, he was found dead with his wife in their bed at home. And although the official report stated that his death had been due to carbon monoxide poisoning, multiple theories soon emerged. The most common one being that he was assassinated by the Nazi regime. This one is undoubtedly the worst football tragedy of all time. On May 24, 1964, Peru played Argentina in the Estadio Nacional in Lima. That match was vital for Peru as they wanted to qualify for the Olympic Games and their final fixture was a tough match away in Brazil. Argentina was winning 1-0 with only 6 minutes remaining and a goal from Peru that would tie the match was ruled out by the referee. That decision left the home crowd absolutely enraged and caused them to storm the field. The Peruvian police threw tear gas bombs to the north stand in order to avoid that more supporters invaded the pitch. Nevertheless, that just caused more panic and an attempt to mass exit to avoid the gas. But rather than standard gates, the stadium had solid corrugated steel shutters at the bottom of tunnels that connected to the street level via several flights of steps. These shutters were closed as they normally were at every game. Panic spectators moving down the enclosed stairways pressed those in the lead against the closed shutters, but this was not visible to the crowd pushing down the stairwells from behind. The shutters finally burst outward as a result of pressure from the crush of bodies inside and many people lost their lives in an horrible manner. The official death toll is 328, but this may be an underestimate since deaths by gunshot were not counted in the official estimates. And to put it in perspective, this total is still higher than those who lost their lives in the Hillsborough disaster, the Bradford fire, the Eisel disaster, the 1971 Ibrox disaster, the 1902 Ibrox disaster, and the Burden Park disaster combined. Football can be cruel, and not every tear will be of joy. These moments are hard to talk about, but at the same time necessary to remind us the importance of safety, having morals, and fighting corruption. Thank you all for reaching the end of this video. If you learned something here, don't forget to like and subscribe, as it really helps grow in the channel. Stick around and watch this video up next, you will enjoy it as well. I'll see you there.